Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today we're making some Bigfoot clay gnomes. If you would like to make them, just boop, 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 stick around. <laughs> I crack myself up. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. Now, while you're checking these little cuties out, I want to tell you, I get asked about polymer clay crafts all the time for my gnomes, the gnomes themselves. So I'm gonna start a series. You don't need a lot, okay? So those are all the supplies you need and there's not a lot of them. I'm gonna be using Fimo clay, Sculpey, Three is the softest clay, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But you can use any clay to make any type of gnome. Even like this, I made my own silicone clay. You can use air dry clay as well. It does produce a different texture. I will be sharing some air dry clay gnomes uh, pretty soon. So the first thing we're going to do is I don't have any uh, like skin flesh tones right now. So I have white and brown. And so I'm going to make one quarter brown with a half a block of white and I'm going to make my own skin color. So I worked the white about a minute and this brown 10 seconds and then I worked it all together. If you have uh, wrist problems or if you have uh, you know, carpal tunnel, I would recommend using a pasta machine to grade your colors together. It's a lot easier on your hands. So because I'm obsessed with gnome noses, I don't know if you could ever tell that being on this channel, but I'm going to make three different sizes of gnome noses. Here's a hint. They're all big. They're all massive. <laughs> so once I have that, I'm going to start on my body. And this guy is going to be a half block of clay, but is going to be in two pieces. So I'm working that for a few seconds and then pulling it apart. Two thirds, you know, about as one and then uh, one third for the other. This is the body. We're going to roll it. We're going to cone it, which just means we take our circle. We flatten one. We pull up one. Roll it on the table to make it smooth, but just remember not to make the top a point because we're going to build everything off of this body base. So once we have that, set that aside and move to your other one. Now we're going to make the same exact thing here. We're gonna make a little cone, but we're gonna pop our thumbs right up in the bottom to create our brim. And we're going to pull out the top to make the twist. One thing I will make uh, clear through this entire tutorial is don't make things too Thin. What will happen is when your grandkids touch it or you move, it will break. So just make sure you take a nice big funky piece. Now, if you were to leave it like this, it's not very stable. So I'm going to show you a little tip and trick. Once you put it on the body, we'll have a little bit of more uh, structure. So I'm just pulling out the sides here. I'm making the front very short so I can pop my nose up underneath and have that face come out. So here you go. I do recommend washing your hands a lot when you're working with bright colored clay, but you see how I twisted that top and let it rest on the body, you see up there? That's what we wanna do. So get that on, just adhere it gently. We don't need to press it to where it's never gonna come off. Wash up your hands, go back to your natural color or clay, make two logs. These are gonna be our feet. You're just gonna squish one end till it's smaller than the other, and you're going to press in the center with your finger, and that's gonna give you the base of your foot. For the toes, I just made little balls <laughs> in five different sizes. Wait till you see the tiny one because it's so ridiculously tiny. It's so cute. It's so tiny. All right, so we're just pressing them on. We haven't blended anything in together. We're just gonna press them on and just sort of make sure they're adhering, pop it over, and then do the entire thing again. So I'm just gonna size it, make sure I'm making the right size to the other one and make it the same exact way. Make my little toes, make the indent. All right, once we have that over there, again, you're not needing to press this on forever, okay? Don't worry about that yet. We need something to hold this. So I'm going to make a big honky chonky beard out of white clay. Now this you're going to press in. You're gonna push it up under the nose. You're gonna press it and blend it into the body. We're going to actually put our feet on against this beard and that's gonna give us our adhesion. So speaking of anything like adhesion, do you notice anything odd, off? Let me know in the comments section, but it's gonna bother me. Oh, it's gonna bother me. All right, so all I'm doing for the beard is now I'm covering up this big honky chonky bland white thing that we have to use for support. So I'm going to roll snakes 
chunkier at one end than the other. Again, the biggest tip I have for you, can you guess? Don't roll it too thin at the ends. And the reason I'm saying that is because it will break off. And uh, I've, I've been doing these, what, more than 10 years, maybe 15 at this point. And the only breaking I've ever had after things have been blended and baked, the only breaking I've ever had is the very tips of hats or the very basis of beards. So just one thing, you'll see me making pretty chunky pieces. You see the end there, I just roll it back up into itself, make that end a little bit more chunky. In the detail, you'll be able to make things a little thinner because you'll have pressed them on. All I'm going to do here is get these big chunky pieces to cover up that big block that we made. That big block is really important in this design because we had to have something up under the base. And I'll show you the two other designs very, very quickly and you can decide which one you like the best. All right, so once I get all of my pieces on, you can see I'm kind of pressing them up under the nose, but really I'm gonna use a tool. The longest I've been making these, I think has been, it's more than 10 years, not sure if it's quite 15. I had a toothpick and a butter knife. Those were my tools. So I don't want you to go out and buy clay tools. If you have them, great. If you don't have them, get yourself a butter knife and a toothpick and you can do all of this. We will, use that to give detail and to blend in and like really press things in together. We're not gonna use any liquid clay, which can be used as a glue. So that's when we say liquid clay, it's basically a glue. I'm going to put a mustache in here. All looks pretty wonky and bland, but now we're gonna go get a stick of any kind. Wooden, metal, toothpick, doesn't matter. Now we're gonna start really pushing this stuff together. When you push it together, you're gonna to lose some detail. Don't worry, you're gonna bring it right back with this little pointy stick, okay? I'm just gonna add a little bit of texture, okay? That's it, we're just, I, I don't know if you can see, it's hard to show, but I'm just poking the stick and scoring the clay. That's why I love polymer clay over air dry clay. I have so much more time to actually work it. So I am going to be sharing some air dry clay tutorials. I'm trying not to hate it, okay? I'm trying not to be biased. But I do love this part because I can do so much detail work without the clay drying on me. All right, so you can see here I'm just scorching, scorching, you know, kind of like scoring, not scorching. We're not lighting anything on fire. I'm using the paintbrush to sort of blend out any uh, marks that I got from blending up under the beard. And then I'm going to be using that, yeah, there it is. Did y'all notice that? That the foot was actually on backwards. Ah. <sighs> I'm a professional crafter. All right, so I have to get this off. So I'm just gonna end up scraping this off because I can't blend it off. So I'm just gonna scrape that blue and then blend the whole thing again. You can use your finger, you can use the paintbrush. But basically I took this time and you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm using these tools, the pokey bits, to blend the two pieces of clay together. And then I'm also using it to add definition back in between the toes and in the bumpy part of the foot, okay? So I, they are being pressed together, but just not with my fingers. Cause I lose a lot of detail when I use my fingers. All right, so there we go. Now he does get a rub down, a rubbing alcohol uh, wash as well, but I'll show you that with the little girl. It's a little easier to see than with this big guy. You can see he's still soft, hasn't been baked. I'm gonna set him aside, make a body, make a hat, pop on the nose. And now my feet for this girl are a little bit smaller, but they're in the right place. So there's a win. For the braids, I'm just making three like-ish, same. They're, they're not even, but I'm gonna end up twisting these instead of a, a real braid. So I'm just gonna pop one side under and I'm gonna curl it around and then I'm gonna curl the other one around. Do you see on this design, the nose is actually sitting on the feet? So that brought it all together. Here's the wash I was talking about. We use a very small amount of rubbing alcohol. It takes away fingerprints. It takes away lint or anything might have been picked up on your table. It's a really good idea. You don't need a lot. So for the little baby, there's no beard. So I'm gonna build him a different way. I built the body, add the nose, add the feet, and then pop on the hat. And that's gonna glue this all together. So I start really pressing it together once I have the hat on.
Super quick to make this little guy. All right, so he gets a little wash, then everybody gets put into the oven. I let them cool all the way down in the oven. So when the oven stops, I leave them in. No cracking, no breaking. I like to seal mine. You can use a clay sealant or even just a glossy Mod Podge if you want them really shiny. Here they are in all of their little polymer clay glory. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Will you make them? As always, thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.